Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, fellow friends, loved ones. Yes, it's once again a very great privilege to come to your homes, to your offices, to your cars, into your cars, to wherever you are. As we have a very wonderful discussion on on a very interesting topic. Yes, last week we had a very great topic. Yes, we had um Cogza Sultans. Yes, we have. Yes, um, really, really enjoying topic, and I'm sure today's topic will have a very interesting topic also. And so let's stay tuned. We can share the pages also as we have this interesting discussion. So today's discussion is titled "A Greenial Hernia or Pain Around the Groin Region or the Abdomen Region, the Lower Abdomen Region." So the topic for discussion is inguinal hernia. That is in the scientific term. But generally, we mentioned earlier on as pain in the abdomen or the lower abdomen or specifically the groin region. So, what is inguina? Inguina is a scientific term. Actually, inguina is actually um, a structure around the groin region. So, if you look at where your reproductive organ is, just beside the reproductive organ, you have the region called, called the groin region. And we have a very important structure called the inguinal ligament. Inguinal ligament. I N G U I N A L ligament. So a ligament is actually a structure that connects a bone to a bone. So with the ligament intact, the bones can move. And then also they have other structures that are surrounded by the bone, the muscles, the tendons. Yes. And so this structure called the inguinal ligament is a very important structure in terms of diagnosing this condition called the inguinal hernia. So what is hernia? Actually, hernia is actually a protrusion from um, a, the main origin to an unknown, um, to another origin or another location. So we can have an um, um, umbilical hernia, you can have, that is where you have the umbilicus of the, of of a person moving from another place, another point of origin to another place. We have the inguinal hernia. We have so many types of hernia, but today we are talking about the inguinal hernia. So we'll be seeing some pictures also very soon on what the hernia is, and I'm sure you would appreciate it there better. So inguinal hernia actually it occurs when the soft tissue, um, specifically the small intestine. The small intestine is actually an extension of your stomach so when your food you take in food you take in fufu bankun tozafi so many yes even chicken fried rice and chicken it goes into your stomach and it goes into your small intestines the small intestines have they have structures there that helps to break down the fats the carbohydrates so many structures so most of digestion or if not all take place in the small intestine so in the case where the small intestine drops from the normal position and goes down to other structures around the reproductive organ region such as scrotum and other structures we could call it a protrusion that is dropping off down into the from dropping off down from the original location so you could have a hernia so most hernias actually when they are not visible when you are lying down because they are very stable when you stand um, because of the weakness of some structures around the abdomen region they drop off and so and they are mostly also visible when the person coughs so if a person has hernia and the small intestine is very stable if the person coughs the small intestine can drop down and then fall off from the origin from its origin so it's mainly involving the small intestine so it protrudes as it comes down off the abdominal cavity and we have two types of hernias that is specifically the inguinal hernia we have two types of inguinal hernia we have the direct inguinal hernia inguinal hernia and then we have the indirect inguinal hernia i'm sorry these are quite big thing but if you listened in the previous seconds or minutes you understand, you understand that the inguinal region is actually around the groin region we have the inguinal ligament so where the intestine drops off or below the inguinal structure we can have a hernia and some pictures will be shown very 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 soon and so we have the direct and we have the indirect um the indirect 
first first of all talk about direct the diet actually occurs when we have weak abdominal structures we have the uh, specifically the transversus abdominis muscle when they are they are weak um, the transversus abdominal muscles is actually located around the side of your stomach so if you take your stomach like this just beside at the opposite ends of your stomach we have these structures called the uh, transversus abdominis we have so many muscles around the stomach region that helps to keep our bodies um, also well positioned and also protect the organs around our stomach region and these are very very important so there's the, the weak points around this structure called the transversal abdominis causes the inability of the small intestine to be kept in this position and so because as we are standing or we are walking or we are running gravity pulls us down and keeps us stable the same way the muscle prevents the gravity from pushing the intestines down and so if the muscles are weak the intestines will drop off because there's nothing to hold this structure called the small intestine and this could lead to the direct inguinal hernia and the inguinal hernia is actually found around the triangle so the location of the inguinal hernia is actually around a triangle called the inguinal triangle and it's also called scientifically called the Hesebach triangle and so we note that we, we need to take into consideration the location of the hernia because remember that, remember that we have two types of hernia the um, direct and indirect hernia so the position at which this small intestine drops off will determine whether it's direct or indirect. The indirect, so the direct actually drops off at the medial side of a strata called the inferior epigastric vessels. I'm sure they're all big, big words, but these are all the vessels are actually the arteries and veins that supply the intestines with enough blood to keep activity very, very, very. Um, continuous and so when digestion is taking place digestion needs blood it needs a lot of nutrients to be able to break down these foods that we eat let's imagine eating chicken eating so many types of food tuza feed um, and and rice soup yeah, and banco and gun. this is all structure that require a lot of energy and so if these vessels are not so structured and no wall structured they will not be able to break the food down and so also if you don't have this muscle is called the um, transverse abdominis muscle strong enough the intestines will drop off and then you have this condition called inguinal hernia and so the point let's take note the point at which the direct inguinal hernia occurs is actually is media media means close to the mid point the, the mid section of the body and then the lateral is actually away so if if i say media if if i'm i'm standing here if i say media media means close to this place and it's lateral lateral means away from this place and so the um direct inguinal hernia actually occurs at the medial side of this epigastric vessels i'm sure these are all but when you see the pictures i'm sure you appreciate it the more but then we'll just have a brief um, explanation of the condition so how does this condition okay which people are more prevalent in Ghana yes I'm sure our medical doctors have are having some statistics and concern this condition but then um, we will make us aware of those the statistics outside um, roughly um, Americans have correlated about 5 million people of all ages who are affected by this condition called the inguinal hernia um specifically the either the direct or the indirect but then they realize that all persons having a general um hernia specifically also abdominal hernia are about this number five million out of them 75 percent out of five million have this condition called the inguinal hernia and so we could interpret that majority of those having abdominal hernia um, would have inguinal hernia 
that is outside and um as big as america is it is stated that two percent of all men in america are likely to have the or have the inguina henna and this actually is means that more males tend to have inguina hernia as compared to females that doesn't um, derail the fact that females can be affected females also can be affected but majority of the cases are concerning males so um children also can be affected yes children can be affected and um, about 4.5 percent out of the 100 percent of the people having this abdominal hernia yes are likely to be children that's 4.5 percent that's the statistic carried out in, um, in america and so also it stated that even among the males older adults are likely to have this condition called the greener hernia so younger people are less likely to have because and um, as we said, the direct inguinal hernia needs a stronger muscle, needs a weaker muscle structures to be able to cause this condition called the hernia to occur. So if you have strong structures, yes, you're not likely to have this condition called inguinal hernia. So first of all, males are more affected and then also age-wise, older persons are likely to have this condition. But then, yes, the truth is there is treatment to this condition there is very 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 much treatment as early as is detected um, you're able to see um, progress of your condition and so we say that I want to just quote this, um, one of the statistics that says that in general indirect um, inguinal hernia are more common than direct inguinal hernia and so um, we've not talked about the indirect but just a summary of the indirect so the indirect actually occurs the lateral part of the inferior epigastric vessels. So these are all structures around the groin region that play other functions that helps to, for the body to function more effectively. So as we said, there's very, very good um, progress in terms of treatment for this condition called inguinal hernia. If you realize early, so in America, about 1 million persons actually have this condition repaired so if you have an inguinal hernia that is where you have your small intestines dropping from its normal position there are surgical procedures to be able to stabilize this intestine to prevent from dropping as 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 worst as it is because it could be very discomforting it could be very um um um, um, um psychologically it could affect your 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 communication or interaction with the external world so how do we identify this or how do we see someone having inguinal hernia is it that when the person is walking you can see the person having inguinal hernia um it's something that is not so visible yes but then there are some characteristics when you take off your your shirt or your, your attire you can see so we one very important and, and significant characteristic that when the person exposes the groin region or abdomen region you could see a bulge that is a swelling around the abdomen region and when you palpate it it's actually a bit tender and then it moves as compared to maybe um, putting your hands around the other side of the, the the abdomen region and so when you apply pressure there as compared to the other side if it's the left side putting your hand okay so if it's the left side putting your hand here like this here you could feel that it's a bit weak but if you put your hand here it feels a bit strong so this is the this is the actually the, the point where it affects more so this is a groin this is a groin region the whole place of groin region and this this region is where you have the transversal abdominis muscle you have one on your right here and one on your left here and they're important to hold also the intestines in place so if um, you put your hand around the side you could feel that there is some weakness around the muscle here and then you could see some protrusion or bringing or coming up of of this structure called the um, small intestine so it comes you, you, could, you could feel the weakness of the muscle there Okay, so aside the weakness, aside the bulging or the um, 
swelling around the side there's also discomfort so as you mentioned discomfort so when the person tries lifting something heavy or a little bit heavy there's some discomfort around that region where we just showed you and coughing as you mentioned earlier on when the person coughs the person feels some discomfort and some movement around the groin region so in men the experience pain so around the scrotum region that is where we have the testicles there's some pain there because the direct inguinal hernia is actually where we have a drop of the intestines falling off into the scrotal region and so these when noticed um, by complaints or um, yeah, presenting complaints by patients to the medical doctor of pain around the side, the scrotal region, and there is other tests that are carried out to go to further diagnose this condition. So, how do we identify someone having this condition called inguinal hernia? So, it is it is as science scientists have said it's noticed when especially you eat or you're taking a heavy meal just imagine taking in fufu and and palm nut soup is as heavy as one big bowl yes you notice that there is this swelling or this increase in size around that side around the abdominal region because as we said when you're taking food it goes to your throat it goes to your um so far it goes it goes into your stomach then it goes into your intestines so basically after about an hour you could see that there is increase in the the size around your abdominal region and so these are very 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 classic signs of inguinal hernia so by test that is putting your hands around that you can see and when you or the person involves in activities such as carrying or brisk walking you could identify the condition as being in greener hernia okay so we will state that in greener hernia is actually identifiable by physical examination you can identify that this is in greener hernia and you can be able to differentiate between the direct and indirect by observation and by examination Okay, so other conditions could look like inguinal hernia. I'm sure you might not understand, but then I just want to just make it. We have a condition called um, cystic fibrosis. We have chronic cough. We have chronic constipation. But then so many others. But then one classic sign of inguinal hernia is by you palpating around the groin region. You could feel this, this groin region around the side. Yes, around this side and could feel the um, protrusion around this side and so this is very very important and we need to take note of it and so other conditions also that could make this um, inguinal hernia become um, in terms of being become pronounced are uh, one smoking that is when you do too much work you exert too much work or you do too much work it could also cause these structures called abdominal muscles the transverse abdominal muscle to be able to, to become weak we also have um overweight you could have obesity and sometimes pregnancy yes pregnancy there are all factors that could cause you to have inguinal hernia you can have chronic cough when you cough too much it's where it is noted that when you cough 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 you are likely to exert a lot of pressure down the abdominal region and so it could also lead to um inguinal hernia but then as you mentioned in there as you're young you have other structures that are very very pronounced that could support and prevent this muscle from becoming weak but then as age wise it's likely to happen so we have other ways to be able to confirm the diagnosis of this condition called the inguinal hernia, we have the CT scan, and this is one of the 
very very important diagnosis tool that you will to identify the condition called the inguinal hernia you also have ultrasound and then so you can see the swelling you can see whether it's descended into the scrotum region and that's when we can really confirm this condition called the indirect inguinal hernia other risk factors that could uh, cause this condition as you mentioned earlier on advanced age ascites um, we have other that's weakness in abdominal muscles and um, we also have undescended testicles that is when you have um, one of the testicles that is the male reproductive organs structure one of the structures around the reproductive organ region that's the testis the normal testicles are two, but it's likelihood that one any or, or male will have one and one not coming down. And so these are risk factors that will cause you to have inguinal hernia. There are so many, many, many risk factors that will cause you to have inguinal hernia. You also could have a positive family history. If your relative has one, it's likely to have so any um sign that you see as to mention earlier on if you notice of pain around the abdominal region you don't have to keep it to yourself if you cough a lot and you have pain around the side you don't have to keep it to yourself just have to report early because as early as we report it and then um there's a very good chance of having these structures very supported we have also um so many 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 treatment procedures so Aside, yes, aside the um, identification, also we move into treatment, and so the medical doctor will go through as best as possible so many many procedures, and we have um, open hernia repair. There are so many many surgical procedures can be done to correct this condition. You have laparoscopy, we have hernioplasty. I'm sure. If we are to start explaining this condition, I'm sure we'll not finish right now. But then, the most important thing is, if it's located or if it's noticed early, we go to physical therapy, and that is two exercises. And so, first of all, we're going to educate the patient on the condition and the fact that yes, it is as early as is, but we could strengthen the muscles to be able to correct it. Okay, so we go through screening, we identify whether it's indirect or direct to the um, scans, to the ultrasound, yes. Then we go through exercises. So we have structured exercises to strengthen the abdominal region, that's the low abdominal region, getting the groin region. We have pain relief procedures, um, depending on... The, 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 the personality if the person is, is is pregnant if the person has finished just giving birth there are other there are specific treatments given to that if the person is an athlete also there are specific treatments to that if the person is a normal worker if the person is a mason if it is 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 one who doesn't do too much activity there are exercises that is going through with the patient and these are all important to be able to give effective treatments to this condition so we have core stability strengthening exercises that helps to strengthen the abdominal muscles and also to be able to strengthen the groin region we have straight leg raise we have um um core stability strengthening exercises such as um isometrics that is you holding your stomach and squeezing and uh, the stomach and your buttocks region for for quite a, a while you also have you can have um quadrup um, um, alternate exercises so the person stands and um, kneels down and puts the hands on the bed and then raises one leg up and raises one hand up there are so many exercises that as physical therapists will go through in terms of treating this condition as inguinal hernia so it's very very important and the other condition that could look like um, inguinal hernia we have someone having um, abscess that is fluid around the side but then if there is proper assessment proper examination the very 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 important note is the through the ultrasound or through the CT scan and we can identify it as best as possible yes 
So, we want to look at some pictures indicating inguinal hernia. Um, so, just a minute. Um, we'll be with you right now. Just a minute. Just a minute, so we'll we show you very soon the pictures of the inguinal hernia. So just let's stay tuned as you watch. So. Just a minute. So. So this is the inguinal hernia. Yes, you can see it here. Yes, so this is it. I'm sure we can see it very clearly now. So this is the direct inguinal hernia. So this is it. Yes. Uh -huh. So you can see the small intestine. This is a small intestine. That's it, the small intestine coming down here. But it doesn't go so much down. It doesn't drop into where the scrotum is. So this is the scrotum. You can see the scrotum. This is the scrotum. Uh -huh. And this is the small intestine. Yes, they can hold the small intestine intact. Yes, so you can see it holds it like this. So this is the um, this is the indirect inguinal hernia. So I'm sure we can look at it for a moment and can appreciate it i'm sure if you've not seen one before um, this will be your first time of seeing in greener henna so the one on your far left direct in greener henna you can see um sorry uh, you can see the intestines coming the small intestine coming close to the scrotum this is scrotum the scrotum so the intestines are dropping far away because of the weakness around the transverse abdomen at the muzzle here this muzzle but this is called the direct inguinal hernia so you can see in general that the indirect inguinal hernia is more um, pronounced that is it's it's it, it's 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 the effect is small pronounced as compared to the direct inguinal hernia, we don't really see the intestine coming out so much. So when it's noted early as the direct inguinal hernia, there is very good chance in terms of treating treatment. Okay. <laughs> so these are some of the pictures of the in, the hernia. So you can see that the types of hernia you can see it here okay so you see the intestines here yeah, this is the intestine this is the small intestine so where we have the intestines coming out of the normal position it's called the hernia so this is protrusion when you say protrusion protrusion means coming out so protrusion the intestine coming out from its original location causes hernia okay and so you can have hernia at so many 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 regions so you can have Epigastric hernia, so been an umbilical hernia. We're talking about the inguinal hernia today. Okay, so um, we'll look at some more pictures. Let's see whether we can get some pictures. So, this is the scientist, the physiotherapist, palpating the region around the groin. This is the groin region to see whether there's any um, weakness around that, those structures. Okay, so. Can see this is the so you can see the direct inguinal hernia is here so you can, it's very observable in this case the patient the person is standing so you can see the swelling around the side visibly it's actually small but the indirect inguinal hernia is pushed down close to the school tomb region the scrotal region it's actually long it's longer than the direct 
um, inguinal hernia. So it's, you, you could you could see it, uh, you could notice it as just as possible. Okay. So look at some pictures. We see here that you can get some pictures of it. Okay, so this is the abdominal muscle. You can see this, you can see around the side. Yes, this is you can see around the side. This is the um direct inguinal hernia as small as it is. These are intestines. So this is actually the transversus abdominis muscle. You can see it here. This one. The transversus abdominis muscle. You can see it here. Okay. Okay, so let's see whether we can see some more. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can see it here. This one. This here is the protrusion that I'm seeing here causing the hernia around the side. So this is an extension of what you are seeing here. You can see um, here. So you can see it's pushing away. It's pushing away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is another one here. There are so many pictures in greener in here. Okay. So this is also a very good, 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 good example of the greener in here. So I'm sure if you ask anyone which type of hernia this is, I'm sure you can tell because you can see that it's going down, 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 down. It's going down. Yes, it's going down. Yes, you can see that it's longer than normal. So this is called the indirect inguinal hernia. The direct inguinal hernia is actually small, so you can see we'll be seeing just a small protrusion. Okay, okay. I'm sure you can have you have a very um okay, this is another one here. This is a Direct, this is a direct inguinal hernia. This is an indirect inguinal hernia as long as it's protruded close to the scrotal region. Okay, let me see if we can get another one. And as so you can see, this is also an indirect inguinal hernia. Okay, so this is the direct inguinal hernia. Okay, 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 okay. So I want to see some more pictures. Uh -huh. Okay, this is the direct inguinal hernia. Okay, so yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Um, as you mentioned, as best as possible, you could you should report any complaints of abdominal pain or pain around the groin region, and then you'll be seen as early as possible. Um, inguinal hernia can be treated either as early as possible to physiotherapy, to medications to relieve pain. And if you even report late, yes, there are surgical procedures to be able to strengthen that side and to keep this intestine in its normal position. So you put as early as possible, you give the maximum and the best treatment. Thank you very much for your time. We talked about a condition called inguinal hernia. We had two types of inguinal hernia. We have the direct inguinal hernia and we have the indirect inguinal hernia. We have treatments to it. We have medications, we have exercises and we have surgical treatment. As early as possible when you bring it, bring such conditions or presentations, it can be treated. Thank you very much. Have a blessed evening. May the good Lord be with us all. Bye. Take care.